In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening, give thanks again to God for the call that we have even to live the Christian life, and 
uh, the call towards his heavenly kingdom. We pause acknowledging our sins, the times where we have not lived into that call of God, where we have uh, not approached his heavenly gates by the decisions that we have made in terms of that sin. We ask again for his mercy, that we might be made worthy to receive these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amuziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesy. 
but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amuziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel, the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will. For the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord.
be with you and with with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Last week, uh, I talked about how we're called to be prophets, to be prophetic. And we continue in that same theme even this uh, weekend with uh, the scriptures that we hear. Again, we hear from uh, the Old Testament from Amos and Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, who says to Amos, get out of here. Stop proclaiming you can go and prophesy somewhere else but stop doing it here right he doesn't want to hear it anymore and Amos says well listen I was just called by the Lord I was a shepherd I was out dressing sycamore trees and the Lord called me to this this is what I'm about you can take it or leave it right the choice is up to us even in in terms of hearing that message that prophetic message that call to conversion which is what happens also in the gospel as the Lord Jesus sends the apostles out again to be prophetic in their proclamation of the kingdom of God at hand and then they preach that message it says even in the gospel of repentance but notice what the Lord sends them out with what do they have basically what's on their bodies and what's on their feet right? At least you get, you can go ahead and take a pair of sandals. That's fine. (laughs) Holy smokes. But it shows even in that, that prophetic message that we're called to proclaim that the Lord is the one who equips us and he provides for all of our needs. Even in being that prophet in the world, we're called also to trust in the Lord's providence for us. You and I are each again called to be prophets by right of our baptism It's us then trusting that the Lord is going to provide for the things that we need. And in the meantime, right, if someone's listening to that message, then great. And if they don't, what does the Lord Jesus say to the apostles even as they, people might not receive that message? Enter into a house. If they listen to you and welcome you, then great. Stay there. But if they reject you, and step outside of the house or outside of that town and shake the dust from your feet and testimony against them. It's strong language, right? We're faced with something. As Bishop Barron often says, Jesus forces us to make a decision. We either receive him for who he is, the Son of God, we accept that, or we reject it. He forces us to make a decision. He forces each of us to do the same as we're called again to that place of conversion. But even as we're proclaiming that message outside of, not just within the church, but outside the walls of the church also, to be those prophets. And as people encounter that message that you and I receive first from the Lord, not that we just make our own and mold it in our own image and likeness, but that we receive from the Lord, then we proclaim that message and people are either allowed to receive that or to reject it. We can hear in that even in the second reading 
what St. Paul says to us. He talks uh, to us about even predestination. I'm trying to find the, the word there, predestined, to give you the context in that second reading right now. And I'm not finding it. Scanning, scanning. <laughs> oh, there it is. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. So the Lord has destined us for something. We talk about predestination in the church, right? And the church professes a kind of predestination that's there, not a double predestination, which is important to mark the difference there, right? We're not either destined for heaven or for hell, but God has destined us, desires for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. And he provides us every grace that we need in order to encounter that message with the Lord Jesus, to receive it. And then as we receive it and live it out, then we're receiving that grace from God and able to enter into heaven. If we reject it, we're given that free will, right? It's not that God has, and this is what some people would say even in, in Christianity, but the Catholic Church says, no, that's not the case. Some would say that God chooses some people for glory, for heaven, and others he doesn't give them grace at all. No, it's that we, as human beings, we have free will. The message is proclaimed to us, and we can either receive that message in our free will, or we can reject God's grace. But the grace is there for each of us to receive. So God destines us for heaven. We're called towards that heavenly kingdom, which is what St. Paul is also seeking to encourage us about in that second reading. All of those things that he lays out there, listen, guys, we're chosen, right? This is what God desires for us. You're destined to be children of God. And here's all of the promises that we'll receive if we follow that, if we receive that blessing from God, that grace from God. He's trying to convince us, to win us over, to say, here's what God desires for your life. Redemption, forgiveness, riches in accord with his grace that he lavishes upon us, wisdom and insight, all of these great things that God desires for us, even in this life, but ultimately to share in all of that and for it to be perfected even in life to come. And it's to us then to either receive that or to reject it. And that's, but it's strong language then also if we reject it, huh? That's where the Lord then says, if they reject it, if they don't receive that message, then you go out and you shake the dust from your feet. And he even said, I think it was last week, right, that it would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah if that happens than the people who reject that grace. So we seek to open our hearts to that message of the Lord and also to the graces that we ourselves need to proclaim that message of the Lord, to come to that place of conversion ourselves but also to pray for people that they might be open to God's grace, open to receive that message. It's a constant reminder for us that we're called to pray for people that they might be open to that grace in their lives so that they also can come to that place of salvation through the Lord Jesus. So just to make sure that you're clear to double predestination, the church says heresy, bad, right? It's not what we believe as Catholics, so don't go out and say, Father preached double predestination. He did not, right? Okay, very good. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, as we come again before you, we seek to open ourselves more fully to your grace and that call to holiness to follow you no matter the cost in our lives. We ask the, that also you may bestow upon the world the openness to your grace that they need to come to a place of deeper conversion and faith and trust in you and so receive that message of salvation and eternal life that the church will continue to call and send many missionaries to preach the salvation of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are depressed or lacking self-respect may learn of God's plan for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mercy may be shown to those who reject God's messengers and the truth they bring. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, especially Anna Laura Guarneros, Marty Lenane, Russell Sanderson, Arturo Guarneros, Dana Santiago Batista, and Luke Von Felt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who died in the hope of eternal life, especially Clarence Erickson, Josefina Gonzalez, Virginia Harrison, Rosa Ho, Maud Rourke, Francisco Xavier Reyes, and David Soto Garcia, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of David Romero Sanchez, for whom this Mass is being offered, for the prayers in our Book of Intercessions, and for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers according to your holy will, for we ask them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
trust your guiding hand. In faithfulness you lead all those who keep your command. Preserve me, Lord, and care for me. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, Eusebio and Daniel, his assistant bishops, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, 
Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest and the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Before you go, though, a couple of things. If you're a new parishioner to the parish, there are welcome baskets that are in the narthex of the church after Mass for you, so you can make sure that you stop by in the narthex of the church, just on the other side of this very thick wall. If you think of that as a thick wall, then uh, the narthex is out there. Uh, also, I believe that the Knights of Columbus will be, is that true, they'll be selling tickets afterwards to the Salmon Dinner, so uh, fundraiser for the Knights and all of the great work that they do for us here in the parish and in the community. So uh, Salmon Dinner tickets that will be on sale uh, today and I think over the next three weeks, if that's what I heard correctly. Yep, very good. Okay. And then... Uh, Next, this coming Thursday, we'll have our men's group, also the Barbecue Beer and Brothers. So there are sign-up sheets out in the narthex. If you sign up to let us know that you're coming and uh, maybe sign up for a side dish of some kind also, that's very helpful for us because we like food, right? Okay. Very good. Let's pray our St. Michael prayer then. St. <clears throat> Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is the help and salvation.